De creep back into the market. It's been sorely missed for some time. We hope so, but usually it does take investors a while to forget the last three years, the global financial crisis, as well as the problems in Europe. But it was a fantastic day on the markets today. A rise was 0.3%, and the Australian market really outperforming and bucking mm. the trend that we saw around the region. We saw the Japanese market down by 0.7%, the Korean market down by 0.3%, 0.6%, all really mirroring the moves that we saw from offshore markets on Friday. In fact, our our leads weren't looking to crash out as, as well. In fact, commodity prices saw some really big falls on Friday. Copper prices were down by 2.1%. Oil prices were down by 2.6%. So it was really quite amazing to see our mining majors bucking the negative lead from uh, the commodity prices. And we saw BHP rising 1.2%. We saw Rio Tinto up by 2.6%. And in fact, the iron ore miners really outperforming. Atlas Iron was up by a massive 3.3% today. The financial sector also helped uh, the gains on the Aussie market. Leading the pack there was West, uh, Westpac and the strong result coming out there. So that stock up by 1.3%. And we also saw a raft of economic data coming out domestically. We saw the ANZ job ads. They were a disappointment, down by 4.6% in October. And by the end of the session, we saw Seek down by 0.6%. We saw retail sales outperforming in the month of September with a rise of 0.5%. But department stores, the worst performing sector there, with uh, uh, sales on quarter down by 3.6%. And in fact, David Jones down by a massive 4.2% today and Maya was down by 1.5%. And finally, the trade numbers coming in better than expected with a smaller deficit. So altogether, a pretty exciting day on the Australian share market and great to see our market outperforming. Julia, does the, the outlook for copper remain a bit of a concern for our market moving forward? A lot of talk about further falls. I mean, we saw a bit of an increase last week off the back of that manufacturing print out of, out of China. Uh, reading a note on Dow Jones IG market market strategy suggesting all their clients who have a, a punt on copper at the moment all holding short positions expecting it to continue to weaken. Well copper's been a very strong performer over the last couple of months and we've seen copper stocks also doing very well on the back of M&A activity here on the ASX but if we have a look at copper usually you would expect that a good US jobs report as well as some positive PMI manufacturing numbers coming out of China would have been enough to give Dr. Pop copper a boost. We've seen China manufacturing numbers now at a three month high and above that 50 mark which separates contraction from expansion and we saw that US job numbers on Friday really outperforming market expectations with 171,000 jobs being created in the month of October compared to an ex expectation of 125,000. The usual reaction to positive data like this which supports global growth is that we do see uh, those risk assets improving especially Dr. Copper which is seen as a barometer of global growth expectations but instead what we've seen is the opposite happening we've seen the US dollar strengthening and we've seen commodity prices easing back quite severely I think part of that is tied down to expectations around quantitative easing we are getting more and more signals out of the US that the US economy is stabilizing and that means uh, probably a smaller quantitative easing uh, package coming out also, the election results are important. If we do see Romney uh, coming into office, then there's a question mark on whether quantitative easing is going to continue at all. So the future of quantitative easing really under a cloud there. So um, some big question marks for copper and I guess for commodity prices. And unfortunately, we have seen commodity prices pulling back although listed commodity miners have actually managed to gain ground today. Sure, of, the, of the big <coughs> banks to open their books. Um, look, the market seemed to like what it saw. Westpac is Australia's oldest bank and it managed to be the best performing today up by 1.3%. And really if we have a look at the last update that Westpac uh, gave, there had been a lot of concern around the multi-brand strategy. But it does look like that multi-brand strategy now paying off and really some strong deposit rates we, uh, which have been helped along by that rollout that we've seen of the Bank of uh, Melbourne brand. It's also been underpinned by stronger treasury income as well as uh, cost cutting and that's going to continue to be a feature in the coming year. I think this year is going to be quite a challenging one for the banks and we'll continue to see cost cutting uh, coming through quite strongly in order to maintain margins as well as to increase profitability. But great to see Westpac actually coming in above expectations of $6.4 billion cash profit. It's coming in at $6.6 .6 billion. It's going to be a big week for the banks today. We've seen Westpac's result on on Wednesday we'll get Commonwealth Bank's quarterly uh, update and then on Thursday we'll see ANZ trading ex-dividend as well. Yeah, indeed.